There are several types of tests that we can do to measure the soil resistivity for any particular piece of ground. The most common way is the Wenner method. To perform this test, we drive four equally spaced rods into the ground. I connect a testing wire to each of the rods. I connect them to a meter to measure the resistance. Here's a typical example. If we look inside the meter, we can see that it injects current into the two outer rods and then measures the voltage on the two inner rods and then uses both the voltage and current values to work out the resistance measured. We can then convert this resistance value R into a soil resistivity measurement using the following formula where rho, which is the soil resistivity, equals 2 times pi times A times R where R is the resistance value measured by the meter in ohms and A is the spacing between the rods measured in meters. The soil resistivity is measured in ohm meters. The spacing of the rods A defines the depth at which the reading is being taken as the current between the two outer rods flows through the ground in a parabolic fashion. So by varying the spacing of A we can change the depth at which we are measuring the soil resistivity which can be very useful information when we're designing our grounding system. Let's do a worked example. For the arrangement shown, calculate the soil resistivity at a depth of 2 meters. Using our formula from before, the soil resistivity, rho, equals 2 times by pi times by a times by r. As we can see on the meter, the value of r is 7.4 ohms. And the spacing A is 2 meters, which will measure the soil resistivity at a depth of 2 meters. Let's now put these values in the formula, giving us a soil resistivity of 92 ohm meters at a depth of 2 meters. Where do we measure the soil resistivity? Well, here's our typical 115 keV substation. As we've said previously, the soil will not be homogeneous and may vary considerably as we go across the site. So the best way forward is to take several measurements across the site and at different depths so we can develop a good picture of what is going on with the soil. Here are the results that we found. As you can see, for each result we recall the date, the time and the weather. As whether it's not it's raining when the measurement is taken can be quite important as it will affect the soil resistivity value. We then take an average of the four readings at each of the depths. So to get the average soil resistivity value at a depth of 1 meter, we take the 1 meter readings measured at location A, B, C and D, divide them by the number of readings which was 4, gives us an average at 1 meter of 130 ohms. We then repeat this process for the depth of 2 meters, giving us a reading of 98 ohms, and 3 meters, giving us a reading of 99 ohms. As you can see, the soil resistivity tends to reduce as the depth of the soil increases. This effect is quite common and is normally due to the water table, which will sit at a certain depth below ground level. As soon as you get below the water table, the soil will become saturated with water, which will always reduce the value of the soil resistivity. Whether we use the 1 meter, 2 meter, or 3 meter soil resistivity value, will depend on which type of grounding calculation that we use.